Hey y'all, it's Jess. Uh, welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. I've got something I want to share with you, but I kind of need to give you some backstory first. We went and visited Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds headquarters in Mansfield, Missouri right before the holidays. Maya and I spent two days there. We had a wonderful time. We got to spend a lot of time with Jared Gettle, who is the owner and founder of Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. I uh, got to know a lot of the staff, explored their greenhouses, enjoyed their vegan restaurant. Just the entire visit was absolutely wonderful and we're planning a couple trips back up there. Uh, while I was there I did do a few videos you guys saw that showing their pick line and uh, just kind of our excitement and exploring the place but I actually had a memory card malfunction and I lost a good bit of footage from that trip which was very frustrating. Of course, that's one of those things that you hate. And of course it happens in a situation where I can go back and just reshoot it. And so I had a little bit of footage left and the times I've sat down and tried to edit uh, this footage, I would get frustrated because it didn't really tell a story. <laughs> However, right now, and many of you I know are like me and you are planning your garden. And so any sort of hands-on footage of showing different varieties, I know that could be really valuable to you. So. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and play this stuff where you can see us hanging out with Jared Gettle, talking about different varieties, um, and I do hope that this helps you in some way. What is something that you're offering in 2019 that you're really excited about that you've not offered before? There's so many, so many incredible things. I'm, you know. Um, Probably the, oh, I don't, the pink celery is probably my number one favorite this year, the pink celery and the purple pak choy. A lot of the Chinese and Japanese vegetables I'm really excited about. Especially probably Japanese vegetables overall are my new favorite category, but uh, the Chinese vegetables have a lot of potential too, a lot of diverse. Now we saw the purple pak choy down in the greenhouse. We started yeah. were doing like the cedar started, beds to start testing off. things out, right? It's beautiful. We're going to have our grow lights and the cedar yeah. beds and be able to That's, do a lot of trials all, hopefully all year round. That's wonderful. So a lot of new herbs this year that we're excited about. The, um, the purple plantain was a fun one this year that we enjoyed in the garden. It was just like the plantain that grows in your yard, but it's a bright purple. That was I'm going to have to get some of that. That Before sounds probably, awesome. Um, I, one of my favorite crops is the butterfly peas. It turns everything purple or, bl or well, blue, or it turns purple or pink if you add lemon. Oh, or wow. Or acid. Anytime you add it, it'll turn like you can make natural pink lemonade just by adding a few flowers to your lemon egg. Wow. And boiling it, of course, for a minute. Boiling it in a little bit of water in the point in your lemonade. It's a fun one to make blue rice for like, uh, in Thailand they use it like blue rice and mango for sticky rice and mango. Mm -hmm. And you can also add, I think it's alkaline and it turns it green. So a lot of times you can get pink, purple, green, blue. That's really cool. Yeah, that sounds great. Or the Kyoto red carrots, dark red color, really good flavor. They're quite sweet. He said this isn't even as sweet as they sometimes get because it's been warm in the greenhouse. Fantastic flavor. That's definitely one to grow. Kyoto red. I'll let you pronounce that one. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> the the Labaricher, is that how it is? Labaricher? Yellow? You always want to make sure you wash your produce well before you eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I've never washed my produce before. Really <laughs> That's yellow color too. That's pretty. Oh, wow. Pretty nice yellow all the way through. Mmm. No, that's it's really different. piney. Yeah. That's good. Different flavor profile from the oh, yeah. totally red. Different. Not so much the aftertaste, but the initial flavor. Mm -hmm. We don't have photos of it yet, so instant kale grows like really tall. Oh. Mine's not quite. Mine are about this tall. I just planted them a couple like months. Well, next year, I'm hoping to have that one. There's one red radish, actually. Oh, wow, that's that beautiful. Color. Yeah, that's gorgeous. There's one red. 
Beautiful radish, though. This is going to be a fun one for a fall crop. Yes. Makes it beautiful. Nice oblong, red inside, red outside. Mm -hmm. uh, we harvested most of the big ones up here. This here is actually a hybrid version, but we have the Owen Holiday one down here. We were just testing them, too. But they both look exactly the same, and they both perform the same. And we're going to see if there was a difference in the color, but there's not. They come out just about the same. Take a look on the inside. Oh wow. Green flash, bright green flash. Are they as spicy as what's the um, if they're grown in cool weather they're really sweet. They're actually called uh, they're called fruit radishes in China because they consider them a fruit and not a vegetable. Wow. But they're growing as hot greenhouse. Mm. So they're not they're still a little like warmer. They still have a little bit of a radish. A little bit of a radish. They need to be in cool weather. The, in China, they call these fruit radishes the green flesh and the red flesh because they are so sweet. Yeah, they really look great together. On a, if you cut yeah. them up, and they both get about a pound or two a piece when they're full growing. So. Those are beautiful. Oh, the, they taste great. Now, these were in the greenhouse, so they're warmer. Therefore, they had a little radish kick to them. But he said growing them in the cool, they'll get real sweet. Just solid green almost all the way from here to here. Just beautiful. And are those available in the catalog? They or? are, yeah. So uh, I'm gonna cut one of these open, peel the skin right off Look of them. That. You can peel these. That's really cool. Yeah, That's just cool. has a skin that pops right off. It's just... really neat. And the skin's where most of the spice is, but you, they're not really delicious unless they're grown in cool weather. It's called That's Chinese type. yellow turnip. I think oh, it's wow. probably a type of rutabaga, it looks like to me. This one. Yeah, it tastes like a little bag. Mm-hmm. We have the lunar white, it looks like, and uh, those out. Sorry, lunar white carrots. Lunar carrots. white carrots and pusa acida um, carrots. The carrots. Okay. The pusa acida, that's the one that has really high an anthocyanins, it is. just like the. Is the nebula more black than that, or They're are they about the about same? The same. I mean, and this pusa acida tends to do well in warmer weather than some of the other carrots. Yeah, oh, that's beautiful. Gorgeous carrots. Of course, we'll be back here um, in May because I am a speaker at Baker Creek's Spring Planting Festival. But one thing I really want to do when we come back up, might even make a separate trip when the garden's here in full swing. And I'd love to come do some garden tours of Baker Creek's gardens. I actually talked to Jer about it yesterday and he said he would love that. I just think it would be really cool to get to show you guys all of um, the wonderful varieties that they're growing here because you know there are a lot of them. Now those carrots were absolutely delicious and we actually got to try a lot more than what you see in this video. Um, we went live with Jer on Baker Creek's Facebook page um, and did a video there where we tried lots of different carrots in the greenhouse. I will put a link down to that video below in the about section so you can check it out if you'd like to see more of this experience. So I, I hope that helps you guys. I hope that that was um, worth hanging on to. I know it doesn't tell just a a whole lot of a story but it was just such an incredible honor for me to get to spend uh, that time with Jer. He and Emily are incredible people. They really are just absolutely extraordinary. The story of Baker Creek I think is really amazing. Um, you know Jer started Baker Creek when he was 17 years old and uh, that's been I think right over 20 years now ago and that is just so wonderful to me because you know he was he grew up in the garden and was homeschooled and I don't know it's just really encouraging to me to hear of um, someone doing such an awesome thing at a young age and then it growing to honestly be just like a world changing thing I mean Baker Creek has really uh, done a tremendous amount for the world of heirloom seeds and I know I'm thankful so it's a huge honor to me um, to get to call these people friends I think it's really awesome and I hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching I bless you until next time